In the shadow of the Pentagon and Washington, D.C., is a neighborhood parish that is full of life. Our Lady Queen of Peace, a mission of the Spiritans, is a vibrant parish serving a wide, ethnically diverse population. The outreach of the parish is seen beyond the physical borders of the United States. Our Lady Queen of Peace has been twinned with St. Joseph Parish in Maydor, Haiti since 1997. And I started working with the parish committee, Haiti committee, in the year 2000. I've been the director or the chairperson of the Haiti committee since 2004. And I've been to visit Maydor, Haiti 18 times. The objective is to help the people in Maydor reach their goals. And they really set the goals, and we try to help them achieve them. Uh, basically, their main thing is working on education. And through our twinning program, right now we're sponsoring 2,020 kids to go to school. And plus, there are 905 kids in outlying chapel schools that also go to school. We're a, a small credit union, about $2.5 million, and we have limited service. And so there's several hundred, four or five, six hundred faith-based credit unions around the country. So in this parish, uh, I was not here when it was started in 1964, but that was about the time when the parish got parish boundaries, um, and there was a concern that African Americans were did not have access to credit. And so that was one of the several driving forces towards starting a credit union. The pastor at the time, Father Ray, a Spiritan, uh, was a driving force in starting the credit union in 1964. We have about 60 um, uh, activities going on here. Ministries. You know, ministries is what I was trying to say, yeah. And um, they all, we, we focus on social justice and equality for all. And those are the things that stand out most for me. It's, it's sort of like a family, and, and, and we get along very well. I mean, sometimes uh, people come here and they don't know what this church is about. And I remember Father Healy uh, telling people, if you can't deal with the way this church is, then you probably should find another church because this is what this church is going to be. I can't think of a better place to be a social justice minister because this parish is so caring about social justice, ready to do whatever needs to be done. They have, we have lots and lots of direct service activities that we're, where we're actually you know, getting in there and helping people who are in need. And then we do a lot of education and advocacy about those issues because we know that we can't just put the Band-Aids on and feed somebody. We've got to go out and see you know, why is that person hungry and what can we do about our legislation or our community to make a change. You know, that is just what this parish is about, and it's a great place to be able to do that. Community is a nonprofit that I started a few years back, and it's selling tea and hosting teas at Our Lady Queen of Peace in support of the food pantry and the guests at Mat 25. So I thought, what else can I do with tea? That would be a ministry at the parish. So being able to sell the tea, the proceeds going to the food pantry or to Mat 25 was kind of an evolution of my not being able to have a tea shop at the moment. Today we went to a shoe store. Um, it was open for 78 years in business. Um, and sadly, I think two days ago it closed. And um, the owner was there. And so we were just packing up boxes of shoes to take um, to a bunch of different places. We took them, obviously we brought them here. I think the passion of the community here, I mean the, the families also make trips to get here. Most people travel at least 20, 30 minutes to get here and folks just have this passion to give back to the community, to help out others, to be together and that's something that you don't find in every place. I think my favorite thing is when youth or young adults come up to me with an initiative that they want to do and then my job is just to try to help them complete that and follow through with it. So it's not me trying to come up with things to entertain them or to keep people busy or occupied. Uh, so the fourth Sunday of every month we do a potluck for young adults. And that was actually something really great to walk into. The first, I think my first week was a potluck week. And I didn't know if I was supposed to do anything. You know, am I supposed to organize, arrange, moderate? Everything was done. I mean, the young adults have just sustained themselves as a community here. I think there were about 50 people here that first one that I was at. They bring their own food. It's very uh, intentionally unstructured, so there's no lecture, there's no presentation. It's really about eating food together, 
and just being a community. And then to be a part of the different tables where, you know, one table will be talking about faith, another table will be talking about work, another table will be talking about sports or something. But uh, it's been very intentional by the pastor for the past seven years to really not structure it in any particular way and not force it, but just let it evolve. So whether it's making brown bag lunches for undocumented day laborers or our food pantry, um, our shel uh, carpenter's shelter where we make dinner for families um, at a shelter in uh, Alexandria. Um, we have prayer uh, ministries. We have um, different, uh, different types of outreach uh, that we do into the community. But then also we have a lot of, um, we have a breakfast committee. We have breakfast um, from about 10.30 until 1 o'clock on Sundays. Um, after the 9.30 and 11.15 Masses, which is, again, it builds community. It builds a sense of community so, so that people aren't going, well, who are you or why are you here? It's, it's just this. Um, and they're all run, um, they're run by the, the members of the parish. And um, they're really committed to their individual ministries. We have one ministry that's called Ujama, and um, it's, uh, um, it seeks to... Uh, put on uh, celebrations uh, and programming that raises up the, um, the history of this as a parish, as a black Catholic parish. We have a Building Forever Families um, ministry that reaches out to couples, young or not so young, who are thinking about adopting or foster care um, because we have so many adopted and, uh, families and families that are doing foster care in the parish. In the parish, we have, um, as members of the parish, we have two separate um, L'Arche communities who um, worship here and are part of um, uh, our parish community. So the L'Arche community is, uh, they are intentional communities where individuals choose to be companions with someone who has um, a significant disability, and they are they walk through life together. The community involvement of the parishioners at Our Lady Queen of Peace is manyfold. The spirit and outreach at Our Lady Queen of Peace.